Hey friends, welcome back. I am today back at the drawing board, literally, finishing up a charcoal drawing. And I'm trying to draw a, a distinction between a charcoal drawing and a charcoal sketch. This is, I like charcoal sketches, but they're a very different animal from a charcoal drawing. A charcoal drawing much more finished, refined, and so forth. The charcoal drawing can can be, uh, in fact, in black. If you're working in black and white, it is one of the friendliest mediums in the world for achieving super realism. But of course, you there's a few tricks you can learn that make that process easier. I showed you several of those tricks the other day when I started this. Uh, tricks like using charcoal powder and a brush or brushes and I used quite a bit of that in this illustration and so on. I think I came up with the other day uh, I laid out here for you I think six forgive me if I, I'm off by one or so I think it was six different techniques for blending or removing or erasing the charcoal six different kinds of erasers if you will and I think it was seven different ways for applying, putting the charcoal on. So six plus seven, that's roughly speaking, if my numbers are, if my memory serves me correct, roughly 13 different methods for manipulating the charcoal on the, on the paper, on the surface. And right now I'm using one of the, one of the, so to speak, eraser methods, which is using, uh, white charcoal late in the process. Now, quick explanation. I'll let you zoom in here real quick so you can see as much detail as possible. Quick explanation. I couldn't finish this the other day simply because I ran out of workable fixative, the spray, the spray stuff, the workable fixative. And uh, so I had to hit the pause button, much to my dismay. I hate being all, I'm sure you do too, hate being all wrapped up, engaged in a project, and then you can't finish it because you don't have some product. Well, that's exactly what happened to me the other day. So uh, here we are three or four days later, whatever it is, glad to be back. Um, I had really hoped that yesterday I was going to do some watercolor. Uh, Yesterday was a vacation day for me. My wife and I took the day off. It was delightful. We were tromping around um, the Sand Hills region of North Carolina. That is um, Southern Pines and Pinehurst and Aberdeen. Those three delightful little towns. Um, some of you have no idea what I'm talking about. Just a quick introduction if you are a golfer or a fan of golfing then you know all about pinehurst number two uh one of the top rated golf courses in the country surrounded by dozens of also very highly rated golf courses so it's a it's a golfing mecca i don't golf which is just fine with me i don't need any more stress in my life <laughs> So I'm just happy. I've golfed about six times in my whole life, and it was fun, but that was enough. Uh, but the, the area, the region is just gorgeous. Anyway, I thought that my wife was going to be, she said she was going to be shopping in one particular place, and I thought, and I've been there, and it was her birthday, so I was happy to let her shop. And But I was going to sit outside um, the shop and do some watercolors, but it turns out that shop is no longer there. So we shopped together for other things. Anyway, I had a great time, but I did not get any artwork done and didn't do a broadcast, as you can easily see. Um, back to the job at hand. So one question you might have is, well, why, simply because you ran out of workable fixative, why couldn't you, you don't understand, why would that keep you from finishing Good question. Thanks for asking that. <laughs> the reason is because um, in order to get 
what I called the other day, black velvet blacks in watercolor. Let me, let me grab something just to illustrate this for a minute. Okay, hang on, just can, okay. let, me, let me get this to stand up. Let's slide off. Let me, let me show something to you. I wish I had at my disposal right now one of my uh, uh, grayscales that I have created. I've, I've created a grayscale in almost every medium. The reason is I've taught classes in almost every medium, especially watercolor, pencil, and charcoal. I'm, I'm glancing real quick through my pile of catch-all stuff and see if I can lay hands on it really quickly. Okay, I can't. Um, because a, a grayscale is very helpful and I make my students do it all the time. Okay, look at, let's look at the darkest part of this illustration right now is this area right here. And I'll go ahead and zoom in. Of course, we have a, an, an incandescent light shining on it that is somewhat blue, yellowish like most. Okay, that looks dark to us, does it not? That looks like black until I lay this down beside it. Do you see that? And all of a sudden, we, we should all have it and aha moment. It's like, oh my goodness, it's not black at all. I thought it was till, I, till this is just a piece of black foam board or something there. And now we see, now we see um, what is really not black and white. So in order to achieve that degree of blackness, at least the only method that I know of is to build up layers and layers and layers of charcoal with workable fixatives because the, the, the paper can only take so much charcoal before you're rubbing off just as much as you're rubbing on, just like pastel and colored pencil and so forth. So a, a, a coating. So here's what I've got. I have here a uh, General's Charcoal Extra Soft. That's important. And let's see. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Woo! Now we're talking black. In fact, it looks to me like what I'm putting down here is actually blacker than that piece of uh, foam board or whatever it was that I just put down. Now I, I'm uh, I'm going to do something. I'm going to get a special waste basket over here. I'm going to put this down here at my right hand because I do not want to blow this charcoal. Believe me, been there, done that, and. It just cakes everything in the room <laughs> with this thin veil of charcoal. Now, um, I'm also aware of the fact, by the way, I want you to be aware of the fact that by the time I finish scanning and printing all of this stuff, uh, there's probably not, there's probably not a printer on the planet, a, a one color printer that can uh, distinguish this this degree of sophistication. Uh, so let me tell you a couple of things. <laughs> and of course, this, uh, again, if you weren't here earlier, this is all just the rough sketch, quote unquote. And that's kind of a misleading term because this is clearly not a rough sketch. Um, but this is just the preparatory work for the final illustration that is going to be done in pen and ink. But when I, two things, one, I want to be able to show my client in great detail what the cover is going to look like with the exception of color, the, the color, the final, the pen and ink illustration will be in color, but I, I want him to, you know, I want the girl, the face, the anatomy, everything worked out very carefully so that, you know, no surprises. I don't want my client when I come to him with the final pen and ink illustration that I spent 30 or 40 hours doing and he goes, um... That's not what I wanted. Do you, do you understand? So I'm doing a lot of work here. That's one reason I'm doing so much detail. But frankly, I don't need to do this in order to show them that. Why am I doing this right here? The answer is, and here's where it's weird. Here's where it's because, for better or worse, it's because I'm an artist more than I'm a businessman. If I was just a businessman and only concerned with the bottom line, I would not be doing this. This would be good enough. But because I'm an artist, and I'm, I'm like 90% of the fit way toward a gorgeous uh, charcoal illustration, then as an artist, I go, well, dang, what, let, let's just do the last 10%. So 
so that in fact this piece itself besides being preparatory for the book cover that i'm working on besides being just on the way to something else it stands it'll go in my um on my website <laughs> it'll be part of my portfolio it'll go on the charcoal and graphite uh, page as just an example of a finished charcoal illustration. So does that make sense? So it's a little bit weird. I'm, I'm being a weird artist here. Um, this work that I'm doing right now, I do not need to do for my client. The, the illustration as it is, is good enough for a client to show. Uh, but since it's 90% of the way toward a beautiful charcoal illustration that I'm saying, well, heck, you know, let's take it. The, let's take it all the way home. Let's go the rest of the way with it. And uh, yes, I'm pretty sure that you you now can see the difference. Can you? Let me see how that. Yeah, like uh, can you see the difference between this and this? Point it at you more directly. Yes, you can. There. That's as black as it was a minute ago. Now I've got that. So much, much blacker. And of course, then this allows me to do a whole bunch of things, like the edge of this tree is way too sharp. So I can start cut, cutting into this tree with some more values and details. And as I said the other day, I want this tree to be um, in The Hobbit. It's Mirkwood. And in uh, Lord of the Rings, I think it's, I should have looked it up, Fang, Fangborn? Fang something. <laughs> Help me out, one of you. Um you know, I want it, I want it to be a, a nice moody, uh, even though in the story that the, the woods that this girl lives in are not dangerous and scary, I think it's most appropriate, and my client is leaning this way, most appropriate for the, the woods to appear dark. Not not so much dangerous, but dark, and because the, a big part of the story, the name of the book is Breaking Free with Broken Wings, and a big part of what this girl is breaking free from is her uh, provincial backwoods upbringing. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with a backwoods upbringing, but there is. There are things wrong with provincial. Kathy, are all black charcoal pencils alike? Good question. No, they are not. Um, I have two brands here, Generals and Peel and Sketch. This kind, you have to have a sharpener of some kind, and that can be an issue sometimes. It's hard sometimes to sharpen. And this, of course, is you peel off the paper. Here's one that's ready to be peeled, so let me do this. And I, I'm sure you know this, but uh, no, they, they, they behave, uh, first of all, soft. In, in, in One company's hard, medium, soft, extra soft does not equal, is not the same as another company's hard, medium, extra soft. So you have to check with that. And some charcoal... Um, the charcoal is manufactured in a different way. Manufactured, you say? You didn't know there was such a thing. Yes, yes. The charcoal that's in these pencils is charcoal that's, I'm sure, turned into a soup, into some kind of slurry and mixed and then dried. Whereas, I'm looking for a piece of vine charcoal. Here it is. This is a piece of vine charcoal. That is, this is a stick or piece of vine literally cooked in an oven till it turns into charcoal. Um, and of course, this is very different from these. This is much grayer. It doesn't get nearly as black. Um, I have somewhere online, I, I, have, I have a demonstration for how to use uh, vine charcoal in conjunction with charcoal pencils to do um, really fun charcoal sketches, which again is not what I'm doing today. I would not call this a sketch. I'm calling this a charcoal illustration or charcoal drawing as opposed to a sketch. This is a very refined, refined handling. Um, actually, the most difficult part of this illustration was not is not the blacks. That takes time. It takes layers. But what I was most concerned about was the midtones, the half tones, the gradations of light in this area. That's what was. That is what is technically something technically challenging and so forth um black is easy it's the all the range of midtones that is a challenge and again if i were teaching a class on charcoal drawing um, the first thing i would have the students create would be a an excellent grayscale from black 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 
to white, 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 and every value, every color, I almost said, every color in between. And all the colors are gray in this case, of course. That's what a value scale is. Um, and then, frankly, for the rest of their lives, whenever they're working in that medium to set their grayscale beside them on the table right there beside them and make sure that they're being um, thorough that that they're in fact that their illustration goes from a num what I call a number 10 in photography it's the other way around in photography black is a zero and white is a 10 but in illustration for most of us I think the other way around for painters it's usually that number 10 is black and number zero or yeah, zero is white, which then actually makes it an 11 scale degree uh, gray scale if you start with zero, right? Zero plus 10 is 11. Oh, my. Okay, so I'm really having fun making this tree go around, fade into darkness. That's that's nice touch. Um, I think I mentioned the other day that when when the final illustration is finally done, um, I would think that I will have done about 20% of the illustration with a char by rubbing charcoal onto the paper. 80 to 85% of the illustration is actually done with a blender of some kind. And that a blender can be, let me show you some blenders. Um, so in order of in order of intensity, perhaps. Okay, here they are. You ready? Real quick. Here's here's blenders. I'll lay them out. First of all, the most gentle blender is a piece of Kleenex, a tissue that has already been used in the past. A used tissue, not uh, not on your nose, but one that already has charcoal on it. The more charcoal it has on it, the more precious it becomes. Okay, so there's the soft. There's the the most gentle. Then perhaps a brush is next most gentle. Uh, a chamois. Is, is sort of like an eraser. Here's a, a colored pencil blending burnisher that can be used. Here's a dry cleaner bag. This is basically a piece of fabric filled with uh, eraser crumbs. I don't know, these are not a going in order. And then a blending stub. So there's, I don't, you, you don't use your pencil. And then of course, then a whole bunch of erasers would come after that. This is one eraser. Um, so there's some things for blending. Kleenex, brush, chamois, blender, dry cleaner bag, and tortillion or blending stuff. And then erasers, which can also be used for blending. So there you go. That's just some some of the tools that people like me, a, a, a real uh, charcoal illustrator, might use in the process. And as I was saying, most, the great majority of the work is done with the blender, not with the charcoal pencil itself. Does that make sense? So when we say it's a charcoal drawing, don't make them in your mental image, don't make the mistake of thinking that the artist used a charcoal pencil to do most of the work. No, 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 no. If it's a, if it's a finished charcoal illustration, the, the artist used all these other blending tools way more than the, than the pencil. The pencil just sort of is an initial tool for getting the, like I'm going to use one right now, for getting the charcoal onto the paper, but most of the work, the fine work is done with uh, a blender moving the charcoal around on the paper. Here's a good example right here. So... See, all of that is, that's charcoal sketch type texture right there. But I'm going to now pick up a blender and transition it from charcoal sketch to charcoal drawing. So again, I, I'm hoping you can see that the effect here would be um, very photorealistic. I also have some, some portraits that I've done. I'll look for those and try to show those to you in a minute. Okay, here, let's, her hair right in here. You want it also to be just as black as it can be. I blew there, did you notice? <laughs> oh, but it was such just a little bit of powder. <laughs> uh, 
back to the white for just a minute. There's a little darkness on her cheek right here that I want to correct. There we go. Um, there's a tiny bit of confusion, I believe, among at least one or some of my viewers. They, they had the impression that this was a woman with one leg, standing on one leg out in the woods. I'm assuming most of you did not read it that way. No, 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 this is a woman running through the woods. <laughs> and, and the model was my daughter in the front yard, my 36-year-old, slight-built mother of four daughter <laughs> running. And I took dozens of photographs of her. And I changed her face here to match. Here's, here's my daughter, okay? And she's clearly running toward us. And as is this girl. She's breaking free. Breaking free on broken wings. A little play on words there by the author. Okay. Um, Again, this is going to be a little bit too tedious for you to see. I need another trick on my sleeve right now. I need to rest my hand now on this area that I've just worked and I don't want to smear it around. So let's do that, okay? Little creases in her fingers. Let's get the sh sh shadows in her fingers just right. Okay. Can you see that up close? There you go. There's her hand. Good enough. Thanks for watching. I'll bring you back in in a while when I'm finishing up perhaps some of just the final details on this illustration. Thanks for watching. <sighs>
um, charcoal illustration quite this way before. So that's kind of fun, something new. Hang on just a second. Let me take a second and talk to my buddy Doug. <laughs> hey Doug, what's up? You done uh, with everything? This is the best I could find when I can't find the other halves. I found these in the furniture box. Do you have any clues? Yeah. Now I'd say wait. Uh, since uh, I'd say don't use them. Let's use the. I since you didn't find any good ones. Wait and get one. Yeah, wait and get one that matches the black, the black hardware. I'd say. So you're you've done the, all the everything that we had on the list this morning except for the door, except right? Except for the door on the small thing. Look in that, maybe where you got the, oh no, that was in furniture parts. Yeah. Up on the very top of that shelf, there's a big tub called, oh, it might not be called anything, but it's housewares. It's like, you know, toilet paper tube holders and stuff like that, curtain rods. There might be a, a door latch of some kind or magnet. I don't know if magnets would work on that, though. Not strong enough, not big enough, and it doesn't have the right strike plate. Yeah, and the only new ones you had in the uh, furniture stuff are ones that are pulled. You know, where you flip the latch over and then you pull it back. Yeah, so yeah. Those have to be a door like this. Right, right, right. Like this. Well, if you don't mind, take a look and see what you can find in that big bucket. <coughs> right. And, and, and if you can't find anything, the other job that could be done would be putting a little strip on the floor. Do you have something? I we don't have the table saw here to cut. Yeah, we do. I have, uh, I have the like... table saw is here? No. I have like one half lum lumber that's one half inch wide and like quarter, you know, quarter by half. And that, I think that's about the right dimensions. You don't need a quarter inch up off the floor. A piece long enough? Yep. Yeah, it's with all inside the garage door with all the other long skinny stuff. Some of it might be spray painted black and that's fine. We can repaint it white. Over by the uh, water heater? No, no, other co opposite, op perfect opposite corner from there. Going by the, the door. Yeah. What I think I would do is close the bolt, go inside, turn on the light, close the door, and draw and a line just, on the floor. Or just put it up to exactly yep, and just, down. Exactly. Exactly. If you want to take the this air gun out there, you could. A staple gun might do the job. Well, liquid nails. We have tons of liquid nails. That would be perfect. Well, you've got uh, some inch and a half grabs. Using that would work, that and liquid combine it with liquid nails because that would really get it down. And I accidentally, sort of not accidentally, bought a bunch last week, so we have tons of liquid nails. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. And then look, for, see if there's anything that will work for a jet for, for a latch. Yeah, because some like this would be good. Be it would. Down. Yeah. It's just I can't find the other halves of them. I can't find the piece the barrel goes into. Yeah. Got it. Okay, thanks. No problem. So off for the vine that is closest to the viewer here. <coughs> I'm going to include some, some, some texture to bring it forward. Thanks, Doug. Um, Ironically, or whatever, coincidentally, I, uh, vines play a, a fairly prominent role <laughs> in this story. <laughs> this, this woman has evidently has a little bit of Tarzan in her <laughs> at several points in the story. Well, she, was, she was, uh, had a deformed leg because of a childhood accident. That's why she's, she's running here. She's, she's been healed of her, uh, had an operation and healed her broken, le damaged leg. But anyway, part of the story was that because partly because of her disability, she learned to swing on vines. Well, she had a mentor that taught her how to swing on vines. Anyway, I'm giving you a lot more information than you need, but <laughs> part, of, part of what makes it particularly appropriate for, for all these vines. Plus, uh, vines are really good for conveying a feeling of, um, what's the word? impassable woods, right? It's easy to walk, anybody who knows anything about woods, you can walk through woods really easy. Unless, of course, it's thick with undergrowth or thick with vines. <laughs> that changes the, changes the situation quite drastically.
So a little bit of texture in these foremost vines. And uh, I think I'm I think I'm liking the way the the illustration is turning out. Um, I need more. I'm going to add more darkness. And oh, well, here while you're watching, also I realized that I love this black over here, but I can bring it further around the tree. I can make that darkness come around the tree. Now, again, for those of you who are maybe just catching me, understand that this entire illustration, even though. You know, I want it to stand on its own. I want it to be a decent show-off, if you will, um, charcoal illustration. It is all really just the preparatory, the rough sketch, if you will, for a pen and ink illustration that I'm about to, to do. Hopefully we'll start that to later today. And um, that is a, a job I've been waiting for for a long time because I want to do a not only a live broadcast of me doing a pen and ink, but I want to do a, a edited video of uh, pen and ink because I, I want to call it pen and ink cross hatching state of the art. Um, I have two right now or three. One is pen and ink cross hatching. One is pen and ink cross hatching. Master's Edition. That's my one video that has really gone viral. It has 2.6 million views. Now I have another one that's called Pen and Ink Cross Hatching um, Vintage. Vintage Pen and Ink Cross Hatching. And there's a reason for that. It's it, I'm redoing in that video. You can look it up. I'm redoing. And there's no talking in it, by the way. It's kind of different. I just let the ASMR or AMSR, whichever it is, sounds of the scratching of the pen be the only sound in the video and uh, that in that one I am reworking an illustration that I did in 1978 one of the fun things about getting as old as I am is you have a long history <laughs> and you can actually say I did this illustration 40 years ago <laughs> something all you young people can't do yet but don't worry the Lord spares you, you will, <laughs> you will be able to make such audacious statements. Anyway, so I want to do a, a, a video. I have been wanting to do one for a long time called um, Pen and Ink Cross Hatching State of the Art. And I, I, I intend to do what I say. Let me show you real quickly, just for fun. Since I, since I got that far into it, um, the the state of the art pen and ink state of the art. Of course, I'll do this. It's going to be on vellum. That is to say, this translucent plasticky paper. It's really paper, but very much translucent. As I hope you can see. And the pen and ink will be done on multiple layers. I don't know how many. I think at least three layers. And if I feel like doing more than that, I will. So it'll be the front of this paper at the back, front, back, front, back, front, back. Three layers will be six layers of pen and ink work. And that's what I'm calling uh, state-of-the-art pen and ink. Um, again... I don't know anybody else in the world that does that. Probably there is somebody, but I don't know about them, and I've never seen it. Never seen it. And I just threw my gloves down somewhere right there. Uh, for charcoal work, by the way, you'll notice even I wear gloves on both hands. Um, oils, the oils from your hands are death to charcoal. You do not want to get oils from your hands on this paper. Because it will definitely show up when you start doing this, this kind of, this degree of um, detail. I don't mean detail. I mean this degree of subtlety is really the word. Um, just one little hand smudge will just show up something terrible. So, uh, yeah, the gloves are not to protect my hand. <laughs> Some people wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, forgive me for laughing. The gloves are here to protect the paper, not my hand. <laughs> uh, okay. 
Rein it in, Dan. <laughs> uh, as you can, I'm assuming you can tell, I'm trying to achieve a, a, a strong sense of depth, a deep sense of depth. <laughs> Is that redundant? <laughs> A, a deep sense of uh, front and back in this illustration. So this this vine that I'm drawing right here, with all the details in it, and I'll probably come in and do just a few leaves on it. It's it's right up, you know, it's it's a foot and a half from the lens of the camera, quote unquote. Right? It's it's right up in our face. Maybe I should do a, a thick. Maybe I should make it thicker even. I don't know. But I want it to look like it's right up close. And then, of course, I want you to feel like you're seeing deep into the woods, even though that's, again, that's sort of an oxymoron. If the, if the woods are thick, you can't see very far into it. But are you with me? <laughs> so, but that's what I'm trying to, to indicate here. We're seeing deep, deep, deep into the woods. So one of the chief things that I'm doing is distinguishing between hard and soft edges so things with hard edges are close the softer the edges are the further away for instance whoops whoops that's supposed to be light colored the further away um the object is the softer it is i mean, I mean that, forgive me for insulting your intelligence you already knew that but i'm telling talking to myself making sure i remember that <laughs> So every, every single inch of this illustration is being done with a blender of some kind. Whether it's a brush or a chamois or a piece of tissue or a blending stub. Um, oh, every, every inch except this. The, one of the final things I will do are these fireflies. And even some of those will be blended, of course, but... And that, as I said, can you see that? You can barely even see those dots, can you? They're there. Um, there's, again, this wonderful tissue. Once you've got a tissue that's getting good and dirty, you don't throw it out. My goodness. The dirty tissue in, in, when you're doing chalk or, 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 or um, charcoal, the dirty tissue is the valuable one. Oops, an eraser. Now, every time you erase, after you've sprayed the illustration with a workable fixative, you can only erase down to the, 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 the fixative, right? So these marks that I'm making right now are just taking me back to a... Uh, dark gray so it's, it's really fun it's really fun i hope hope i've inspired some of you again here's another trick this is not whoops let me back up and this is not for blending this is for cleaning up and i typically hit whack whack it on my jeans to get the old powder off it and then do that to get the eraser crumbs You can probably, YouTube can probably hear that music. Sorry. Joy to the world. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. You may, YouTube might be sending me a friendly reminder. Actually, they've been, they, they leave me alone to a remarkable degree lately. I don't know why. I should have gotten a whole bunch of notifications from last week's, last Friday, Saturday's wedding. I didn't get any. I don't know what the deal is the band played a number of copyrighted things. Anyway. If they leave me alone, I'll leave them alone. <laughs> Actually, YouTube is much more flexible in their enforcement. They don't kick you off the air. They just say, well, you can't make any money on this video. And I say, fine. By the way, I don't know if you all noticed, but I, I, I cut off all the advertising on my um, on my YouTube channel. I'm assuming you know that. So when you come to my channel, you don't have to suffer through 
even five seconds of a commercial before you can start watching. I hope you appreciate that. And I am, as soon as I get around to it administratively, I am going to add a donate button or a Patreon button uh, for those of you who would like to make it a little bit more uh, for for who for those of you who'd like to make me to make higher quality videos, well, there's just one thing I need to do that, and that is just a little bit of financial support so that I can take time to buy a better microphone, which I've griped about plenty, <laughs> and so on. And once again, you, you, you don't want to watch too much of this because it just gets too... I'm having fun, but... It would be real hard for you to have fun. Okay, so back to some details on this foremost divine dark light, dark light. And it dawns on me that just a lot like a, a good painting technique, um, a good uh, a good uh, charcoal drawing technique is built up of layers and layers and layers. It's not done all at once. A sketch can be done pretty quickly. And now that I've done this, I do promise to show you uh, again a, a, the difference between a what I call a charcoal sketch and a charcoal drawing. I mean, show you the process. You can a sketch, of course, you the the brush strokes, quote unquote, the charcoal lines are left visible. And I've got a, I've developed a really neat trick. At least I think it's a neat trick for um, doing a charcoal sketch. It incorporates vine charcoal, initial drawing, followed up by pencil charcoal, and then wiped off with a tissue so the vine charcoal essentially disappears and just turns into a grit, into a half tone. And then you finish with a charcoal pencil and eraser. It's a really neat formula that I came up and stumbled upon about six years ago a really good technique for doing portraits, quick, quick, fast portraits. That's how I stumbled on it in 2012, which was for me the year of the portrait. Speaking of the year of the portrait, um, once again this past Saturday I was not happy with the, the, my portraits that I did live at the wedding, so I brought that painting home and I'll finish it at home. But that makes about three or four paintings in a row where I'm not happy with the portraits and I really am getting concerned about that. One of the things I plan to do is to just clinic myself, just maybe spend a couple of days doing nothing but 20 minute portraits. Bam, 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 bam. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's what I did in 2012. I just did every day a 20 minute, tried to do every day a 20 minute portrait. I didn't make it every day, but I got a whole lot closer than I would have if I hadn't tried to do one every day. <sighs> okay, here is a charcoal square. Just a little half inch left. And I'm going to use this to get some of the really dark stuff that I want right down here. the foreground. I can I think that all of this work that I'm doing um, will pay off very nicely uh, when it comes time to do the uh, final the pen and ink illustration. I'm I'm making an awful lot of decisions that I won't have to remake um, with the final illustrations, the values, and of course all the details and so forth. So I'm considering all of this time, besides just trying to produce a nice charcoal illustration, um, I, I expect it to be time well spent because it'll save me time and make my final illustration all the more uh, interesting, accurate, and so forth. Yeah, that's better. That 
that uh, darkening this corner. So now you can let you see sort of the dark here, dark here. The, the, the enfolding of this figure in light is coming across really nicely. I just want, I think this tree, this trunk right here, can be a little darker than the, the ones around it. So now it's coming forward a little bit, and and these are further away. Yeah. There really is something fun about drawing or painting out of your head, because you're creating your own, you're creating a world, very much the way an author of fiction or science fiction or, or fantasy creates you know, their own world. I feel very much like that when I'm doing this kind of stuff. I don't have to, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to copy something that exists. So I'm free to uh, do it on my own. I think, I think now a, a vine that comes across like this would be a good idea. By doing that, I just dirtied my white chalk blender, so take a minute and clean that up. By the way, um, I have your little pen holder, just for those of you who care. So this is in charcoal, hard, medium, soft, extra soft, and help, it helps me stay just a little bit more organized to have those set up like that. I don't waste quite so much time saying, now where did that go again? Where did that pencil go? Which one's the soft? Which one's the medium? And I really am using the, the each each hardness um, in turn. about time for me to let you guys go. This is getting, I'm afraid, pretty monotonous. Fun for me, not so much fun <laughs> for you, I presume. Let me do just a, a little more. Let you watch me do a little more. Um, back to what I was doing a bunch of when, when you weren't when the video is not going. So I'm loading up my tortillon, <laughs> tortillon, tortillion. It looks like a, it looks like a Latino word to me and it's got a double L. So I always, I mean, it ought to be tortillo, tortillon, right? But I have no idea. Don't know if it is a Latin word. Don't know where it comes from. I should look, Google it and see, see if Google will tell me. But anyway, if you pronounce it like an English person, it's tortillion. I feel like English people, maybe it's American, English speaking people, maybe it's Americans, are famous or infamous really for mispronouncing other languages. <laughs> Part of our old ancestral colonialism. <laughs> I don't care if this city has been called Mumbai for 4,000 years. We're here now. We're calling it Bombay. <laughs> All the Indians look at each other. <laughs> the natives of, of uh, Mumbai and say, whatever. 
<laughs> Stupid Englishman. Anyway, forgive me. <laughs> uh, for picking on my ancestors. Oh, there's no, believe me, in today's politically correct climate, there's no end to picking on the, the colonists. No end at all. In fact, it's gone a little bit too crazy. Anyway, I'm not going to go down that. Don't even tempt me to go <laughs> to chase that topic down anymore. But did want you to see how I'm doing this. Load up the blender with white pastel and then paint with, if you will, paint with the blender. Now I do have a question, a misgiving out in front of me, by the way, that I'm going to find out in a little while. And that is, I'm a concerned that the uh, workable fixative may in fact eat, dissolve the white pastel. Um, I do know that that fixatives and white chalk pastel typically do not play well together. So I might just try to spray a little tiny bit of this illustration in the corner and uh, see how it goes before I just launch into a whole bunch of spray. And do the same thing with the black here for a minute. Load up the blender. And I keep saying I'm gonna I'm gonna quit. And I keep going. But no, I am gonna quit. Thanks for watching guys. So thanks for your comments and uh, I'll be back and finish this sometime. All right, putting my the last of my charcoal supplies back into my charcoal bucket. And I'm finished with the illustration. Um, I was afraid that spraying it with workable fixative would cause some of the white charcoal to evaporate, disappear. In fact, that's exactly what happened. So, what I did is, before I sprayed it then, because you, I mean, ugh, you really can't have un, untreated charcoal illustration laying around. And you can put it immediately behind glass. Anyway, that's a job. So what I did is I scanned it into uh, Photoshop, into my computer before I, before I sprayed it. So while it was still in its full vibrancy, I, I scanned that image and then took it outside and sure enough, the spray did cause the, the dark, the uh, white charcoal to disappear somewhat, but see, it was subtle enough that almost, I'm the only one who could tell, almost, not quite, you guys could tell too, but it's, it's good enough, it's close enough, it's good enough to be a a good final illustration and I've got the if my client approves of it oh while we're at it here I don't know how well this works for you to look at my computer monitor but let's try this can you see that yeah okay so that's what that's what the cover is going to look like um, this word, and the, the illustration, of course, is going to be in pen and ink, not charcoal. I've colorized it here, made it brown a little bit. And the word with here, I'm going to, right now I'm going to try doing some hand lettering, some calligraphy, so I don't have to use this fake calligraphy stuff, which I have an aversion to. And when that's finished, I'll be all done. <laughs> Sorry to jerk you around like that. <laughs> don't look at... Whoops. <laughs> uh, come on. Don't look at me. Look at my illustration. It's better looking. <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching. Maybe, I don't... Next broadcast, maybe, maybe we'll be doing the pen and ink of this. Thanks. Bye-bye.